Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be talking about how to solve Ravensburger's exit puzzles. All of the information I'm going to give to you comes from my own experience. Like I'm not an expert on exit puzzles, it's just me and my sister have done quite a few of them. So I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of how the process is, what you're supposed to do and with different one of them because they've got different collections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain everything how it's supposed to be done like from the start to the finish and then I'm gonna give you like picture examples of it and when this happens I'm gonna mark the section as spoiler section so if you don't want to see the revealed picture or the answers or anything like that you're gonna be able to skip that section but still hear like the general rules just without the example I guess. So I'm gonna do that for you because I don't want anyone to see something they don't wanna see. So you're gonna be able to skip everything and I'm gonna do three different ones for basically the 99 piece one, you know, the box that comes in collection of six. Then I've got these ones. These ones go in the same category as the kids one because it's basically the same principle. They just have bigger pieces and the clues are a little bit easier to find. And then we've got the circle puzzles as well, which are three in the collection. And I've done two of them, well, me and my... The reason why I'm doing this video today is because I had a few comments asking either about how exit puzzles are solved or I had some people stating that they are scared to try them because they don't know how to tackle them. That's why I decided it's probably best to just put it in the video and you can just see for yourself if that's something you would like to do or like try or maybe also realize that it's not actually that difficult because I know when I got my first one I had no idea what I was doing and then it became easier with time and I think it's time to just crack on with the first type of exit puzzles. The first set is a set of six puzzles by 99 pieces each and the title of this one is The Haunted Manor. I don't have any of the small puzzles on hand with me and I'm gonna try to explain everything as I can in like the most detail because like I said I want to put spoilers separately so if you don't want to watch them like you can just skip them so I have to be really detailed when I give you the oral description of how the puzzles work so you can understand without even seeing the picture. So the small six puzzles basically work on the same principle as the circle puzzle except this one's got like an extra step in between but they have the same principle and this one has a different one. So everything that I'm gonna say for this puzzle is basically also relevant for the circle puzzles but you know I'm gonna repeat myself still but just so you know that it's the same principle basically. So step one, assemble the puzzle, obviously, always the first step. Then the second step is gonna be you're gonna have to find what the puzzles are and this is something that can be a little bit tricky especially when you're doing the puzzle for the first time because you don't really know what to look for it's like going to the escape room for the first time you have no idea how it works so what can help with the second step is basically every time you get an exit puzzle it's got like solutions well it's got clues plus solutions and it's all online i'm gonna link everything in the description box below so what happens is particularly on the smaller puzzle the 99 piece ones you're gonna have four things that you're gonna have to look for four things are gonna give you different solutions so you need one number you need one symbol you need one color and you need one letter so you need to find four things which means that on the puzzle on the picture there are gonna be four different sections or like parts of the puzzle that are gonna give you you know, specific solutions. And with those four, it's normally quite easy to know what goes together because the colors are very specific, then the symbols are specific, the letters and the, you know, numbers. So it's a lot easier to find. With those puzzles, it's a lot more trickier because you always look for numbers. So it's a bit more difficult to know which sections go together, if you know what I mean. Well, you will know when you did the exit puzzle if you haven't done it yet. So when you go online to find the clues for the puzzle that you're doing, what they're gonna do is they're gonna completely gray out the picture of the puzzle that you're assembling. And then they're just gonna do the golden outline for what goes together. So even without opening the clues, it already helps because sometimes it's gonna be on opposite sides of the puzzle and it goes together. So that's something that definitely helps. But like I said, with those puzzles, the small ones, is not that difficult because you're looking for four completely separate things so it's quite easy to know what goes together and i think the 99 piece ones are a little bit easier probably they're made for kids i would assume i don't know because i managed to go through all six of them without even using the you know the clues so it wasn't too difficult i think there was just one that was causing me some troubles because i didn't completely understand your i managed to get the right answer but i used the wrong technique to get there so i don't know how that <laughs> happened but yeah 
I realized that I was doing it wrong after I found it, but okay. So step three is when you find the section that goes together, you now have to solve it. And now I'm gonna give you completely random, like made up examples of how that's supposed to work. But for instance, if you're looking for a color, it's gonna say, I don't know, yellow plus red equals orange. Then it's gonna say red plus blue equals purple. And then it's gonna say blue plus yellow equals question mark. That's basically gonna be your color. I know this is really simplified, it's not normally that simple in the, you know, in the puzzle. Normally the way it's done is the same, it's just, it's a little bit different. It's not gonna say this plus this equals that, it's gonna be done in a different way that's gonna be a little bit trickier, if you know what I mean, but that's basically the principle. And it's gonna be the same with like numbers, letters, symbols, or with symbols, what sometimes happens as well is like, they're gonna give you, I don't know, circle, triangle, square, triangle, question mark, for instance, and then you realize that the pattern, okay, if circle, triangle, square, and then it goes back to triangle, then it's probably the circle. Again, it's normally not as straightforward that I just told you, but that's the principle. It's like normally you need to find like a pattern that it follows or, you know, something. It's usually like multiplying things or like, you know, following order or finding it's, yeah. Difficult to explain when you can't show the picture, but I hope that I explained the section well enough to move to step four. And step four is basically finding the piece that is a part of the solution. So with this puzzle, again, this is the part that's similar to the circle puzzle, is when you have all four solutions from one picture, so you have one number, one letter, color, and symbol. On the edge, exit puzzles always work on the edge, okay? So on the edge, you're gonna have stuff written on. It's going to be different color dots, it's going to be symbols, letters and, you know, numbers. So when you have all four from the puzzle, what you have to do is have to find two edges that match. So it's going to match either number or letter or like color or symbol. Something is going to have to match. And when you find all four, so it means two and two match, you're going to find the crossover. And when you find the crossover, this is going to be the puzzle that is a part of your solution. I hope I'm explaining that right. Again, when I do the spoilers, I'm always gonna use just one puzzle. I'm not gonna spoil all six of them and I'm, I'm not gonna spoil. It's always gonna be used one puzzle. So if you really don't understand, maybe go check the spoilers as well. But I'm hoping that I'm understanding myself right. Oh, you know, just get the puzzle because when you do it, I think it's gonna be quite clear as well what you have to do. So once you get that one puzzle piece that is crossed over between the solutions that you got, this is only one out of six of your solution, your final solution. And because these small puzzles are a set of six, you have to find all six of them in order to get to the final solution. And final solutions with exit puzzles are that the pieces that you combine, they form something. Normally a picture that you put somewhere on the puzzle or, you know, that is gonna reveal how either you escape or something happens that help you escape or something like that. So it's normally gonna form another picture that is gonna show you what the exit plan is, if you know what I mean. So basically everything that I said from steps one to four, you have to repeat on every single puzzle out of the six. And then I guess the step five, the final solution is basically combine the pieces that you managed to collect from finding all the solutions and get the final results out of those six pieces. And also one thing that's probably good to know is the puzzles from one to six they actually change difficulty from one to six. So it's always good if you're new to this, start with number one because it's the easiest, you know, to find the solutions and everything. And then by the time you get to like four or five, when they become a little bit more difficult, you're kind of going to have the gist of what you're doing. And I think it's going to get easier by the time you get to the end. Do not start with the sixth one if you have all of them. Yeah, because it's going to be the more difficult one. And it's always going to tell you how difficult the puzzle is to solve at the front of the box. So you're going to know. And now going to the spoilers. And like I mentioned, I'm going to give you sections so you can just skip on the other side. So you don't have to see anything you don't want to see. But I'm literally just going to explain everything that I've just said with pictures and arrows. Now skip. If you don't want to see anything, skip now. <laughs> Step one, assemble the puzzle. Step two, find what goes together. Step three, solve the puzzles. Step 
four, find the piece that is the power of final solution. And I'm not going to be able to give you step five on like the final solution for the first set of puzzles or for the circle puzzles because then I basically spoiled the entire set of puzzles. So I said I'm only going to spoil one, which means that you're not going to be able to get the final, final solution. Moving on now to the largest set of exit puzzles that Ravensburger does. And they're basically all separate. Every one puzzle is final solution in its own, so you don't have to form a set or anything. So they've got two different types, is 759 piece one, which is like an adult version. And then they've got 368 piece one, I think, which is the kids version. The principle in finding the solution is the same with the adult version and the kids version. The only differences there are is the pieces are bigger and I think like the pictures are a bit brighter, so it's easier to solve them. And also the solutions are a bit easier to find like it's easier to find what goes together and it's also easier to find the final solutions so when you're going to be buying exit puzzles one thing that is going to help you know the same one i mentioned with the first set of six you know how i mentioned with the first set of six that the difficulty increases it says everything on the box so if you see here it says how difficult the puzzle is to put together and then it says how difficult it is to find the solutions so every box basically has it marked down on how easy it is to solve the puzzle and then also how easy it is to find the solution or rather how difficult it is. So this is definitely something that you want to look out for, especially if you're buying your first puzzle. So if you're a good puzzler, you know, this one can be as difficult as you want it to be. But if you're doing the exit puzzle for the first time, it's probably good to keep at the lower numbers for, you know, how difficult it is to find the solution. And maybe it's not even that bad to try one of the kids ones first because the solutions are quite a lot easier to find. So maybe it's a good start to like ease your way in into exit puzzles because some of them can be quite difficult. Even my sister and I struggled with these two puzzles and we've done quite a lot of them. It's just it's been about six months that we haven't done any and I think we were a little bit rusty, if I can say that. So yeah, definitely if you're new to them, just try something easier because if you try something difficult, it might, you know, put you off of doing them again because you're not going to be able to understand everything or like even know what you're looking for. Again, I'm going to give you all the steps that are basically going to be almost the same as in the first set of puzzles, except with all these puzzles, you're always looking for numbers. And it can vary from like two digit, three digit, four digit, it can vary. So basically what happens with those puzzles, one thing that is probably gonna throw you off a little bit when you get the puzzle is once you put the puzzles out, there are gonna be some pieces that are not actually puzzle pieces, it's just gonna be like squares. That's all to be thrown away. I have no idea what it is. I don't know if it's like a cut mistake or something like that, but it's basically the outer frame is in the bag with the puzzles. You get like a booklet inside as well and it gives you all the instructions so it's gonna say just chuck those stuff away. One thing to warn you when doing those exit puzzles, you know how I said that you basically get the final solution by finding the pieces and putting them together? Okay so with these puzzles all of the solutions come from the frame. So you don't have to cross over any solutions, it's basically you're looking for numbers and the entire frame is full of numbers. So the majority of the pieces have some numbers written on them and when you find the solution you have to find the piece. So there's going to be no crossover in these puzzles, you just basically grab the one that matches the number. And because of that, because you get all the pieces from the frame and they have to fit together in the final solution, there can be misfits when you're putting the frame together. I have to warn you about that because when me and my sister were doing it for the first time, we were like, what is wrong? Because like, we know that Ravensburger has good quality and we just couldn't figure it out. And then when we solved the exit puzzle, we were like, okay, that makes sense. Because the pieces have to fit together for the final solution, which means that when you're putting the puzzle together, you might experience some misfits, well, just with the frame. And now I'm going to move on to going through all the steps, which are basically going to be the same as with the first set except a little bit different to, you know, how to find the solution. So step one, again, assemble the puzzle. Step two is basically find what goes together. It's a lot trickier with these puzzles because like I said, you always look for numbers, which means that it's a little bit trickier to find which sections go together. Step three, again, solve the puzzles. So this one is a little bit different than the first set because like I said, you can mix the colors or you can find the order of the shapes. So with this one is a little bit different because you're always looking for numbers, but it's almost like the same principle. Sometimes it's going to be, I don't know, 4, 8, 16, 
question mark. So it's gonna be four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is, I don't know, 32. <laughs> um, so this is basically gonna be your final solution. It could be as simple as that, obviously, again, not as straightforward as what I just said. So once you get the solution, you have to find this number in the frame and then eliminate that piece because it's gonna be part of your final solution. The next example of how you can find the solution is you're gonna have like three houses, for instance. It's gonna be a yellow one, an orange one, and a red one. And each of them is gonna have one number on it. And then on the other side of the puzzle, like in a corner somewhere, is gonna say orange, yellow, red, and it's gonna say one, two, three next to it. And then that's gonna give you the order. So you're gonna know like, oh, orange number comes first, and then it's gonna be the yellow one and then the red one. And that's gonna be the order of your final solution. Again, when you have that number, have to find it in the frame and eliminate it. Okay, so step four is basically finding all the pieces that match your solutions and eliminate them out from the puzzle. And now we can finally move to step five, which is basically put the solution together. So with these puzzles, like I mentioned, everything happens within one puzzle, so you get the final solution as well. And it's normally something that's already existing in the picture, but it just changes. So when you put the pieces together, you have to put it somewhere on the puzzle and it's gonna reveal something or like the way you exit in a way. And now again, everything's gonna be shown in pictures. So if you don't wanna see any spoilers, make sure to skip now. Step one, assemble the puzzle. Step two, figure out what goes together. Step three, solve the puzzles. Step four, find the pieces that form the final solution. Step five, put all the pieces together to get the final solution. And now moving on to the last set of the puzzles today, which are basically circle puzzles. And like I mentioned earlier, they have the same principle as the first set of six. So you're basically looking for numbers, letters, colors, and symbols. So that's similar, but in a way it's different as well, because there's a reason why these puzzles are called circle puzzles, and this is it. So this is the reason why the puzzles are called circle puzzles, because you've got this circle to help you find the final solution. And also, I'm gonna need this because I don't know everything off by heart. So I'm gonna have to read what it says, because what happens with this one? Okay, let's just start at the beginning. You put the puzzle together, right? Step one. Then step two is find what goes together. Then step three is find the solutions. And now this is where it becomes a little bit different. So what you have to do with this puzzle, you have to find a solution which is gonna be a letter, a number, a symbol, or a color, okay? But this is where it gets, I'm not gonna say tricky because it's not tricky, but when it becomes a little bit more complicated, okay? Because you're gonna be looking for normally six solutions. So when you're gonna be looking for them, you know, you've got only four different things that you can look for, which means that they're gonna repeat itself as well. And I think for every puzzle, it says how many of each you have to get. So it's gonna say, for instance, in this one, you have to get two numbers, two colors, one letter and one symbol. And so you know what you're looking for. So step four in this case would be, when you know the solution, for instance, we say that the solution is color red. Okay, and this puzzle has a lot of dots on the picture, which is not the case with other exit puzzles. They're always, everything is always in the frame. With this one, the entire puzzle is, <laughs> it's like a rainbow, honestly. It's got so many colors, letters, everything all over the puzzle. So what you do, you put the circle in the middle of the puzzle and we said the solution is gonna be red, okay? So where the puzzle starts, there's gonna be a red dot somewhere on the line. Let's say that the red dot is up here, so it's easier for me to you know, remember. So what I have to do is now turn the wheels to match that red dot at the top. And then I need to turn the second wheel to match the red dot. And I have to turn the third wheel to match the red dot. And I have to turn the fourth wheel to match the red dot. So you see now all of the red dots are matched basically. And when this happens, we've got four wheels now. So what you do is each wheel is gonna show you what to look for. So this is where it becomes a little bit tricky because you have to follow the right order, otherwise you won't be able to find the right solution. And this is the step that I always have to check because every time me and my sister do those puzzles, we write them down so we know the order. So the first wheel is gonna give you the symbol, okay? So what you have to do 
is find the arrow. So you've got the arrow here. And then you go along the lines and there's going to be different colors, numbers, letters, whatever. So you go along this line and the first symbol that you find is your solution. Okay. Then you move on to the second wheel and the second wheel has to the letter. So the second one points you to the letter. Okay. Which means we've got the arrow here. And again, you follow the line until you hit the first letter. And this is your solution. The third one is going to point you to the number which means we find the arrow, the arrow is here, you go up and then you start looking and the first number you hit is your solution and then the fourth wheel is going to be what's left, the color. Yeah, the fourth one is the color, so you've got the arrow here and you just follow it and once you hit the first color, this is your solution. And remember, nothing within this circle is your solution, the solutions only start once you hit the puzzle. This is difficult to explain, I'm just realizing that now. But I don't want to give you spoilers, so again, everything's going to be explained in pictures later on if you don't understand what I was talking about. But it's basically the same thing. So now that you've done that, that you got, you know, your four things, now the same thing happens as in with the first set. So once you get all four, you know, solution keys, you have to find the coordinates, what matches on each side, and then you find the piece that is crossed over between both, and this is going to be a part of your final solution. And in these puzzles is normally, like I said, six of them. So it's going to be quite a lot of things that you're going to have to figure out. What me and my sister figured out the best thing to do is we just do it every piece at a time, you know, so we don't mix and match and then forget what the solutions are. Some people might want to do it again. I don't know how, you know, everyone wants to do it, but we just do it as we go because then it just becomes a lot. And as soon as we find the piece, we're like, okay, throw everything away so we don't mix with the next question. So because this one has an extra step in between with the circle, that's why step five is going to be, you know, find the piece that is the power final solution, which is going to be crossed over somewhere. And then, you know, step six is going to be combine all the pieces together to get the final solution. Now, these circle puzzles have an extra, like, final, final solution once you've done all three puzzles and it gives you a special solution as well for those three. So in the instructions, it said that you don't have to own all three puzzles to get the final solution. I think it's just the case of like knowing that you've done them and not getting any spoilers. And I think everything can be done online. I'm not completely sure, but I'm going to get there. I still have to do the wrong one, I think. And then also another thing that I wanted to point out with this puzzle, you know how I said with the other ones that you get misfits with the frame. Well, with this one, because you're looking for the inside pieces, there are gonna be a few pieces that can, you know, cause you a little bit of problems because, again, once you put them together as the final solution, they have to fit together. So sometimes you can mistake what goes together within the puzzle, but that's, again, all intentional. Now, let's move on to the spoilers again, so if you don't want to see them, skip now. Step one, assemble the puzzle. Step two, find what goes together. Step three, solve the puzzles. Step four, use the circle to find your solution. Step five, find the piece that forms the final solution. Step six, assemble the pieces to get the final solution. I hope this video is going to help you tackle that first exit puzzle that you've been wanting to do but were too scared of like not understanding what you have to do or something like that. So I hope I explained everything okay even without showing the spoilers and all. I have to admit that the best part about doing these puzzles is doing them with my sister because it's almost like, you know, it's not just doing a puzzle but it's like a social thing as well. And I know that you can do them on your own but... I prefer to do them with someone, it's easier that way as well because sometimes you just get stuck on something and the other person could see something that you might have missed, you know, so I think it's a lot more fun this way. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye!